Hello, my name is Dr. Richard Siegel and I'm a professor at Towson University and I'm here today to welcome you to an introduction to the research that we do on this beast. This is the Northern Map Turtle and I have been lucky enough to head up our research team that we call Project or Program Map Turtle uh, since 2008. And normally I would be giving you this talk in our lovely facility in Port Deposit where we have a combination of a museum and a research station for doing research on this endangered turtle. But unfortunately during this year of coronavirus, that is not proved to be possible. So we're gonna do the next best thing here. We're gonna give you a virtual tour, an overview of the research that we do on this endangered turtle here in Maryland and hopefully answer many of your questions and hopefully get you interested enough in our work and what's being done in partnership with Port Deposit that you'll want to pay us a visit again in the summer of 2021 when we are hopefully open for business as usual. So here is what I would normally tell visitors. The reason that we're here, the reason that our facility exists is because of this animal you see in the photograph. This is a northern map turtle. It is an endangered turtle here in Maryland. It lives only in the Susquehanna River between Hob de Grace and about the Pennsylvania line. We estimate the total number of turtles that live in Maryland at less than 250, perhaps less than 200. So it's a very rare species. And it has been endangered for a variety of reasons, including loss of habitat, human poaching, uh, collecting, pollution, and particularly loss of nesting sites and predation by uh, predators that we'll be talking to you about shortly. The reason that we got started with this species was back in 2008, the Maryland Department of Natural Resources came to me because I have a history of working on doing research with turtles and said, we have this endangered northern map turtle in Maryland, but unfortunately we don't have a very good idea of how it's doing, what its status is, and particularly we know very little about its ecology. We don't even know where they hibernate, we don't know where they nest, we don't know how many of them there are. Could you head up a research team to find out those things? And since I love to work with turtles, they're my favorite animals, uh, I said, sure. And starting in 2008, myself and my wife, which is our whole research team back then, started doing research in the Susquehanna River and we did a series of what we call basking surveys because turtles, as you may know, are what we refer to as solar powered. In other words, they spend all of their time, much of their time basking in the sun, uh, soaking up the heat energy from the sun. And this is what we found. We found a lot of northern map turtles on the rocks in the Susquehanna River. For those of you who don't know, by the way, the term Susquehanna actually means river of rocks and it's a great name for the for the river and this is how we would see the turtles would see them basking on these rocks and on logs in the middle of the susquehanna river so we went back to the department of natural resources and we said well there are a good number of turtles not perhaps abundant but they're here and they are enough to do a research project and we got a little bit of funding for them and i brought on a graduate student named teal richards dimitri and teal and i started doing a more intense project to really find out more about where these turtles were spending their time. And what we particularly wanted to know is where did they nest? And what we did is we put radio transmitters on the backs of these turtles so we could follow them around in the river and see where they nest. And the way that we would do this is we have receivers, big antennas attached to the receivers so we can locate the animals every day. And we would do this from kayaks that we launched here in Port Deposit, right in the, uh, the marina, right next door to the gas house. And the guys in the marina were very friendly and they naturally asked us what we were doing with all this equipment. So we told them the whole story about the turtle and why we worked on the turtle and what we were trying to find out and particularly where did the turtles nest? And they said, well, we can answer that one for you. They nest in our parking lot. <laughs> we, we honestly, we laughed and we looked at them like they were a little crazy and said, sure, there's an endangered turtle that nests in the middle of a developed town in a gravel parking lot. Yes, absolutely. We believe you. And they said, no, no, seriously, this is where they nest. They, we see them all the time in our parking lot. And so I said rather sarcastically, I have to admit, I said, the next time you see one of these turtles in your parking lot, give me a call. Here's my cell phone number. And sure enough, Murphy's Law being what it is, the next day they called me and they said, your turtles are in our parking lot. So we came over not expecting to find anything, and this is what we found. And this is a very famous video that you get to see of the turtle called Rhonda. 
And the reason that she's called Rhonda is because Rhonda is named after Ronnie, who is the gentleman in the marina who first found her. And here is a video, if I can get it to come up. Sorry about the technical issue. Here is a video. In the high and dry. It's all the Rhonda underneath the wheel of one of the boat uh, trailers and if you look very closely here you will see that you can see the radio transmitter on the back of Rhonda and Rhonda is truckling on and off between the entrance of the marina and here you can see the cliff and the flux of the Susquehanna River. The reason Rhonda is walking back towards the river she didn't get a chance to nest and by that. And that is a UPS truck. And what had happened, as we found out, is these turtles will come up out of the river. They crawl through the parking lot of the marina. They hit this chain link fence. And once they hit this chain link fence, they try to get around it. And they try to move on this driveway. And they try to nest on the railroad embankment back here. And this is not good for the turtles. As we discovered when we talked to this UPS driver, he said that he sees the turtles all the time. And he saw this turtle sitting on the driveway right here where I have my pointer. And he straddled her with his wheel so he didn't hit her. And he says, guys, you have got to get these turtles out of this parking lot. You cannot allow them to come up and try to nest here because they're going to get run over by cars. And as we discovered over the next several months, this is what the turtles would do. They would come up out of the river. They would crawl through the marina parking lot. Sometimes they'd actually go in the marina building themselves. They would nest along this fence. Sometimes they would get stuck on the other side of the fence. We actually found a turtle so desperate to try to get back to the river. We found her five feet up this chain link fence right about here. And we realized that this was not a good idea. This was a terrible place for these turtles to be nesting because they were going to get killed by traffic or picked up by people or otherwise damaged. So we realized very quickly this was not something that was tenable. So we went to the town and we explained to the town what was going on, that they had an endangered turtle nesting in town and that they needed to perhaps partner with us to help do something for the turtle. And I have to give the town of Port Deposit tremendous credit. Most towns would have been horrified to find out they had an endangered species nesting in town. Port Deposit was not. They were actually very excited about it. They wanted to do what was necessary to help protect the turtle. And what we did was to take the historic gas house, which sits on the side of the marina. Here's the parking lot, the gravel parking lot of the marina. And you can see the Susquehanna River in the background. And what we did is we completely restored this gas house. This was a structure that was built in the 1800s to store liquefied natural gas and then was abandoned and had been sitting abandoned in just basically four walls with no roof and no floor for many, many decades. And the town got funding from the State Highway Administration, from the state legislature, from private donors, from Exelon Corporation to revamp this gas house and turn it into a two-story two structure. The top floor is given over to a research station for studying the map turtles and the bottom floor is a museum for the town. And one of the things that we really needed to do was to stop the turtles from getting into the parking lot and getting onto that railroad embankment. And the way we did this was to put up what is referred to as a wildlife exclusion fence. Here you can see the revamped gas house here in the background. And here is our exclusion fence. And we wrap this with privacy wrapping so the turtles can nest within the boundaries of this fence, undisturbed by people. And the idea is the turtles will come up out of the river they will nest within the confines of this wildlife fence. They won't get disturbed by people. They won't get run over by UPS trucks. And they can complete what they need to do in order to survive as a species without interference from humans. And so this is the basics of what we do every year. And this is equally important, not just for these turtles, but for their hatchlings. Uh, this is a hatchling northern map turtle, and everybody can go, ooh, because it is, it's adorable. It's about the size of a quarter. This is a hatchling map turtle emerging from its nest. We're looking straight down into the ground. This is the hole that the mother turtle dug and she put laid her eggs, about 10 of them inside this nest chamber. She covered it up. This would happen in May and June and early July of each year. And then these hatchlings emerge from the egg about 60 to 90 days later. And then they sit underground for the next eight to nine months. The hatchling map turtles do what we refer to as overwintering in the nest. 
what they do is they sit underground because it's safer for them to be underground than it is to be in the river during the winter. They live off of their yolk stores, and then in April and May, when it gets warm and we get warm rains that loosen the soil, all of these hatchlings come out at once. And this is important because if they came out without this fence being up, they get again into the parking lot where they get run over by cars, they get stepped on by people, and they can't make their way back to the river. So this nest fencing, this exclusion fence, protects not just the adults, but it also protects the hatchlings. Now, at this point, many people will ask me two questions. And the first one is, is the number of turtles in port deposit worth all this effort? How many turtles nest here? And the answer is that there's a total of about 31 turtles that nest in port deposit. In a given year, probably only about 8 to 12 of them actually build nests here. And we get about 20 nests per year in port deposit. And you may say, well, that doesn't seem like very many. Are there other places in the river that they're more abundant? And the answer is yes, there are places upstream where we've seen as many as 140 nests laid in a single year, which is many times what we get here in Port Deposit. And the answer question that will then come up is, well, is Port Deposit worth all this effort to protect? And the answer is yes. And here is why. Because using video surveillance, what we call game cameras, we have determined how many of the nests that are laid outside port deposit actually survive? And the answer is very few. Here is very rare video. You very rarely see video of a raccoon in the middle of a predatory attempt. Here is a raccoon attacking a map turtle nest that was laid about five minutes before this video started. And what you're watching is a raccoon that comes along where the females lay their eggs at this site. It's a nice area. It's very sandy soil, as you can see. It's much better habitat than what we have in Port Deposit. But unfortunately, the raccoons zero in on this habitat. And as you watch this raccoon, she just carried off an egg. I hope you saw the egg being carried off. Here it is right here. And what she's doing, this female raccoon is opening up the egg. She's slitting it open. She's slurping down the contents. And she is getting a nice little happy meal out of this egg. And what she's going to do in a few seconds after she's finished off eating this egg is she's going to come back to this nest and she is going to take all of the rest of the eggs. And in the year that we took this video, we had 142 nests that were laid, of which 140 were destroyed by raccoons. So the survivorship of the nests is less than 1%, very, very low. In port deposit, the survivorship of the nests is effectively 100%. In all the years we've been doing research in port deposit, only one nest has ever been destroyed by raccoons. We don't know why this is so. We don't know why the raccoons don't take the nest in port deposit. I personally think that they prefer to have the beer in port deposit rather than eat the eggs, but that's my personal opinion. But the bottom line is, is that the eggs in port deposit and the nest in the port deposit are the only ones that produce this. They're the only ones that produce viable hatchlings every year. And so much of what we call the recruitment that allows the population of map turtles in port deposit in the Susquehanna River to be viable, much of that recruitment, if not all of that recruitment, happens in the town of port deposit. So yes, the town of port deposit and the nesting of the turtles there is very important to the turtle survivorship. The other question that comes up is, is this working? Is your fence keeping the turtles out? And the answer is, well, maybe, but we're not sure yet. Um, here is a picture that I like to call the forlorn map turtles or the sad map turtles. You can see here's one female right here. There's another female right here. This picture was taken at about 6.30 in the morning through our game cameras. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that both of these turtles are staring off into space, looking at this fence rather longingly going, but I want to nest there. And they don't want to stay within the confines of our wildlife exclusion fence. They want to get out to these areas, presumably where they came from as hatchlings themselves. And we've had problems with people opening our gates and the turtles escaping and getting onto the marina anyway. So at this point, we can't judge whether this ecological experiment, where the, this, the, this mechanism for wildlife management, whether this is working. But this is why you do research. This is why we like to do research, is because we don't know the answers to the questions and we're trying to find them out. 
So that's the end of what we have for you. Um, I hope that this has been informative. There's a lot of other material we have posted online for you, uh, including the video of Rhonda in, in a cleaner way and many other photographs of the work we do. If you're interested in this, you can contact us in the email address in YouTube. And hopefully again, we'll see you next summer in the town of Port Deposit. With that, I thank you very much for all of your help and your interest, and we will hopefully see you next year.